Morning. Please come in. I sleep very early. I wake up very early. Then I'm fresh. I like my breakfast. I like good breakfast, you know. Sport, I like sport. I play tennis. I walk a lot when I travel. Natural fitness, I call it, rather than artificial fitness. I mean, not the gym or going for weights. I walk from here to my office and I come back sometime if it is not so hot or humid. Halaf Ahmed Al Habtor needs little introduction. He's not only the chairman of the hugely successful Al Habtor Group, he's also one of Dubai's best loved personalities. Halaf doesn't often share his personal life, but as we celebrate the Al Habtor Group's 40th anniversary, he's invited us into his world. Welcome to my office. Come in, please. The most important is to have a place where you feel you are relaxed and you can think. Uh, you have mental relaxation. I cannot work in a dark office. I cannot work on uh, offices without windows. I think the environment for an office, if it is good environment, any person will produce more. Every morning I sit with my director, some of the director, not all of them, the, uh, in the head office, and we discuss everything. Uh, pound uh, strengthened a little bit, uh, almost 1.5, 1.499. Work is priority to me. I mean, I don't believe in people, they said, my wife and children, priority number one. That's not true. Work to me is number one. To make my family happy and to make them relax and care then I have to work hard. I never take holidays. I take holiday, but it's working holidays. I mean, I say I'm going for two weeks to England, for example. I go there, but my telephone open 24 hours. I call my office at least three, four times a day. Switch off from work. That's, I don't believe in that. There, there's something wrong with them or with me. <laughs> this is in my blood. <laughs> Nobody can direct you, nobody can educate you, nobody, not a school or a university. This isn't the person. Whether you can be a leader or, or a soldier or a follower. It all began in 1970. Dubai was in its naissance. Oil had only recently been discovered and the town's infrastructure was undeveloped. The young and ambitious Halaf spotted an opportunity and following a meeting with the late ruler of Dubai, Sheikh Rashid bin Saeed Al Maktoum, Al Habtor Engineering was established. The self-belief paid off as Al Habtor Engineering went on to become one of the Middle East's largest construction companies, counting many of the region's world-famous buildings in its impressive portfolio. In September 2007, Al Habtor Engineering merged with Australia's leading project development and contracting company, Leighton International, creating one of the biggest multidiscipline contracting groups in the Gulf region. We become one of the biggest company we can do everything. Born and bred in Dubai, Halaf fondly remembers the old days and was keen to show us some of his early projects. There's a lot of things, I mean, from the ground to the sky. If you take Sheikh Zayed Road, when I built it Metropolitan 32 years ago, there were no roads. I mean, one single road, which is broken asphalt, and sometimes you cannot reach the hotel. They stuck the hotel in the June. People come there, and we have to help them to push the car into the road. I am the first person who built a building on that road first person who did also the resort and the first person who built the house, my house here. My old hotel, Metropolitan Hotel Shahzad Road, it is classic and it reminds me of the startup of myself when I start working. This is Burj Al Arab, one of the most important structure and not every contractor can do that. You know, it is complicated, you need very specialized shuttering and specialized technical and specialized engineers. I'm proud of this delivery on time and proud that it is the landmark in, in the country for everybody to know in the world.
The magnificent five-star Al Habtor Grand Resort and Spa is the newest of the group's hotels in the UAE and one of Halaf's favourite hangouts. Every afternoon I go there to rest a little bit, sometimes to go swim, every afternoon I play tennis. Today, the group comprises a diverse range of companies, from schools to motor cars. Halaf's brother, Sultan Al Habtor, heads up Al Habtor Motors. Mr. Khalaf, first of all, he is uh, my brother, my father and my friend. He is my teacher in the meantime as well. I mean, without him, I will not be here. I mean, if you have a boss like Mr. Khalaf, uh, still the beginning is just start. Because he always wants to be number one and he doesn't believe in fail. He always encourages everybody who works for him to be the best. His employees count more than 40,000 making the group one of the largest in the region. The great thing in our group it is multinational people working from all nationality in the world. We don't differentiate color, height, background, provided this person is committed and loyal to our group, then he is the person should be saluted. Perhaps one of Khalaf's most endearing traits is his caring nature and his willingness to give not only to his employees, but to the needy world at large. Halaf gives the term corporate social responsibility a whole new meaning, going well beyond normal expectations by offering substantial cash donations. Charity, it is part of our culture as an Arab. The most important for me is education, family, which is in need, without saying, but there is an area where you have to say, I built this. I did this. This is to encourage, to encourage the other people, the very rich people more than me, to participate on assisting people. Despite his unwavering commitment to his work, Khalaf maintains a close relationship with his family. I have three sons, three daughters. Uh, I think I didn't, you didn't give me time to count how many grandchildren. But I think 23, 24, always I'm here with them. And the afternoon I see them all with the grandchildren, all of them. This is like an oxygen for me. Clearly, Khalaf Al Habtor has achieved an enormous amount in his life, both personally and professionally. I am a simple person. I am not acting in business, that's me. When I sit with a friend, I love them, that's me. If I don't like them, I never sit with them. I never like to upset anybody. Not only I want to be wealthy or rich, I want to be, you know, a person who can, who can help. Still, I am beginning, you know, on the road, and I'm looking ahead and high.